Hello guys, Luke here and welcome back to the channel. Now today's video is going to be about Premiere Pro and how you can actually render your videos in half the speed that you have been previously rendering them in. Now, if you're watching this video, you are either an avid fan of mine and you just like my videos, or you are here basically just because you want to know how you can halve your render times in the latest version of Premiere Pro. Now, annoyingly, the later versions of Premiere Pro CC do not allow you to use your CUDA uh, technology from your graphics card to help you render. So your GPU does not get used very much at all in the whole uh, you know, video creation process. But if you are running an Intel i7 CPU or really just an Intel CPU that's uh, sixth gen or newer, I can actually show you a little trick that can get you rendering your videos in half the time. We're actually going to be taking advantage of the inbuilt uh, Intel iGPU, so the internal GPU that's built onto Intel processors. So basically what's gonna happen is Premiere Pro is actually gonna make use of your iGPU to help you render your videos. You will still not be able to use your Nvidia or AMD graphics card for this method. Uh, maybe there are other methods out there, but I've done a lot of research on this subject trying to get my NVIDIA GTX 1080 Ti to help me export videos. Uh, it's the export that really annoys me, the, the export time. Like for example, the video I've got up on screen here, it took me uh, probably 32 minutes to export with the old method, so not using the iGPU. With the iGPU, it only took 16 minutes to export. So that is the kind of uh, upgrade you are going to be expecting if you meet the requirements, of course, for this process. So without further ado, guys, let us uh, I'm first gonna show you uh, the current problem. So as you can see here in Task Manager, I have my uh, i7-6700K processor. Now, yes, it's a couple of years old, but it does have that inbuilt graphics chip on the uh, CPU itself. And I have here my 1080 Ti, which uh, doesn't do much. Uh, it does a bit of 3D rendering, but you can see here if I click export, it's currently at 31%, but it'll go down, yeah going down 23 so the GP is only being used very very minor uh, it's basically only used for 3d effects so yeah that's why we we're only getting like between 10 and 15 percent from our GPU but our CPU is peaked at 100 of course because that's what's rendering the video or exporting if you will and you can see how here it's going to take 28 minutes or so or 29 <laughs> to export this video now I'm going to go ahead and cancel this because this is just a test. Before we go any further, I'm going to show you my settings. So I'll go File, Project Settings, General. And you can see here, I've got Mercury Playback Engine selected, CUDA uh, selected here. So it should really be using the NVIDIA GPU that I have. Also, I have gone ahead and modified the uh, CUDA supported cards.txt file in Adobe Premiere Pro folder itself. So as you can see, I'm inside the Premiere Pro folder here. And if we go down to C for CUDA, where is it? Yeah, here, CUDA supported cards.txt. And you can see here I've added my card and that is the correct naming scheme for my card. So this trick no longer works apparently. I've researched this as well. Um, adding your GPU to this file no longer works. Just CUDA, just some reason, just they don't wanna use it anymore, don't know why. Anyway, so I've done all I can to try and use my NVIDIA GPU. It just is not working. So unfortunately guys, this method no longer works as far as I know, as far as the research that I've gathered so far. So if we switch back to Task Manager here, you can see how I only have one GPU here, my 1080 Ti. So you're probably wondering, how do I use my Intel integrated GPU if it's not actually like detected by the system? Even when I open Device Manager and go to Display Adapters, I still only have my 1080 Ti and that is all I have in there. So you can connect a monitor to the HDMI port on your motherboard and get a signal even without a graphics card installed. So you know there's an iGPU there to be utilized but the system is not utilizing it. So I'm gonna show you that step now of how to activate your iGPU as well as have your NVIDIA card use at the same time. Now to enable your internal GPU on your CPU, we are first going to restart your system and we're gonna enter the BIOS. So whichever key that is, uh, it's either gonna be the Dell key, delete key, or it's gonna be escape key, or maybe sometimes it's F2, sometimes it's F10. So you're gonna to wanna to press that key. Uh, when you see your, your post screen at the start of your computer booting, you're gonna to wanna to press whatever button that is. For me, it is the Dell key. So I pretty much just spam this a couple of times um, until we get into the BIOS. So now once you're in the BIOS, uh, for your motherboard it may differ. Uh, obviously different manufacturers have different uh, GUIs for the BIOS. But for my BIOS, it is going to be in the chipset menu. Um, it will be something similar for you as well if you have a different motherboard. You can uh, follow the same steps. It'll be somewhere called, like something to do with chipset. Anyway, under chipset, you're going to see the option for internal graphics to be 
enabled or disabled. So of course we are going to change this option to enabled. And that's basically all you have to do guys. You just have to enable your internal GPU in the chipset menu and simply go across to the side of the GUI and go save and exit. And that's all we have to do in the BIOS guys is simply change that option to enabled. And now we're going to save and exit the BIOS. Okay, so now we have booted back into Windows and you are simply going to want to navigate to device manager first. So simply open your start menu and type in device manager and it should come up the first and only option uh, most of the time. Now in device manager if we go to display adapters you can see here there we go Intel HD graphics 530 so as you can see here my PC has gone ahead and grabbed the correct driver for the Intel HD graphics 530 now this might not be the case for everyone you may have to actually get the driver yourself although it's not that difficult so all you're going to want to do if this comes up as not Intel HD it might come up as video adapter or video controller you're going to simply want to right click on it and go update driver and then simply grab automatically from online so it'll just search online and find the appropriate driver for your adapter and yeah this is returning and saying that my best driver has already been installed for this device so that's basically all you have to do to actually start using your internal graphics to help you render videos so now we are going to close device manager and then now if we go to performance tab in task manager you can see here oh we've got gpu 0 and gpu 1 so now we are back inside premiere pro and we are going to test out this igpu uh rendering now so at this stage you may be assuming that we go back to file project settings general and change this to uh open seal but actually this is not the correct option uh funny enough for me anyway premiere pro will crash if i choose this option for some reason i think open seal is more for amd uh, graphics cards and AMD CPUs so even though we have the open seal option there we're not going to be selecting this we're going to be leaving it as CUDA and I know this sounds weird but this is just how it works so <laughs> bear with me um, we're going to leave this as CUDA where we will be changing the option to use the iGPU will actually be when we go to export our video so I believe our iGPU is going to be used when uh, scrolling through the timeline and everything but it's going to be used mostly when we are exporting. So I've already got a project here that I've export. I mean, I've already released this video on YouTube, but I'm going to just export it for a test anyway. So I'm going to go to file here, export media, and I'm just going to call this uh, test, whatever, doesn't matter, overwrite. I've already done this before as a test. And um, really the only thing we're going to change here is in the video tab. And you can see here under encoding settings, we have an option to use hardware encoding. So if you have uh, hardware like an iGPU to use it will just use it so if you leave this as software encoding it will be basically normal render time that you've been used to like you know for this video it'd be like 29 minutes or so 30 minutes but we're going to be selecting of course hardware encoding this will use our iGPU to help us render and we're going to hit export and you'll be able to see the difference now uh, oh we have a file that exists so we're going to overwrite that and let's see how much of a difference it's actually made so it starts off pretty high so previously we were sitting around 29 30 minutes Still going down, it went under 20 minutes. So it's getting lower and lower as you can see. That's going as low as like 18 minutes or oh, 17 minutes now. So brilliant. Um, if we go, it keeps fluctuating between 17 and 19, but if we switch over to Task Manager, you can see here now our GPU zero, our Intel GPU is being utilized. Um, not quite fully for some reason. It's using like 78 to 85%. CPU is still fully being used. So that might be the bottleneck there. Maybe if our CPU was set a bit higher clock speed, I've got this set to like 4.2 gigahertz max. If I could set it a little bit higher, it may actually use more of the internal GPU. Funny enough, you can even see here our NVIDIA graphics card is also being utilized more. So it just seems encoding support for Premiere Pro right now is very uh, confusing and, and weird. Um, I really don't like how it's so segregated. Like if only it could just use our CUDA support again, it would be awesome because apparently you can encode videos like three times faster than the CPU on its own can. So I wish we had that option, but um, unfortunately, to get CUDA support, you're going to have to go back to like Premiere Pro CS6 or something like that um, to use CUDA again, uh, which is unfortunate because now the newest version of Premiere Pro, which is what I'm using now, CC 2018 update 12 point something, it has a lot more features than CS6 did. Yeah, it's quite disappointing. But anyway, guys, that's going to do it for this video. I hope that I've been able to help you with any issues. If you are here viewing this video because you want to learn how to increase your render times, again, you've got to have a sixth gen intel processor or newer so as long as it's from like my cpu generation upwards i've actually got a sixth gen cpu so if you actually have a seventh or eighth or ninth gen cpu from intel you're going to actually see even probably more increased performance when selecting the igpu option to export and render so anyway guys i hope that you have enjoyed this video if you did leave a like down below subscribe for more content like this and i'll see you guys around the channel all right have a good one